Well, we got the uh, Subaru diesel six-speed transmission from Subaru Gears in. Uh, we got it mated to the motor right now. Um, some things I have to do before I put it on. Uh, this bracket, these two brackets right here, these are for the cable shift um, to kind of locate the, the cables in the right area. <coughs> also, this right here is the counterweight for the uh, for the for one of the cable shifters. And then this bracket right here, there's two bolts under it. Had to put that on. So, uh, just some tips. Uh, we lifted it up, got it loaded on, and uh, on each side of the motor or the motor and transmission, there's these two bolts right here that go through the tranny into the engine block. But to, to get this bottom one in on both sides, we had to remove um, this little uh, flange that the CV go on to. Um, so we had to just tap out this little pin on both sides, remove that, put the bolt in really quick, and put it back on. So anybody doing the same. The same thing, uh, I'm going to have to do that. Also, we tightened the pressure plate bolts down to 10 foot-pounds of torque with the torque wrench. And we're going to tighten all of the these transmission bolts to 55 foot-pounds. So, keep you updated. So, as of now, Subaru Gears does not have a transmission mount for this setup yet. I'm sure they will soon. Um, I just purchased a six-speed STI manual transmission transmission mount. Uh, so what it looks like, the bolts line up perfectly with the turbo diesel six-speed. So we plan on fabricating up our own transmission mount uh, to this. So this will bolt to the transmission, and then we're going to make our own training mount. We're in the middle of uh, getting this kind of ready to put under the the van again. Uh, it's kind of tricky because there's not much online uh, to, to go off of so this is kind of why I'm making this video series but here is the power steering pump bracket that I got from Greg from Boxer.com. Um, we had to take these two bolts out over here uh, so the bracket goes on similar to this. Uh, this bracket kind of replaces that pulley with the power steering pump pulley right there and uh, he was able to find this belt it's a dual sided grooved belt uh, that works for for this application so also uh, there was a regular pulley right here just similar to this one that just kind of was there to help the serpentine belt move uh, so we had to go get a bolt to replace it. We tried to grind it down so uh, so this power steering pulley wouldn't interfere with it, but we weren't able to get it ground down enough so we had to just cut off the head of the bolt and then grind a little flathead uh, insert in it. And we got some Loctite and just closed off that section right there. Also, these bolts uh, in here, we I'm not sure if Greg sends them directly to you if you purchase this from him or not, but uh, I got this whole I got the whole diesel setup from Jeff Robinault, so I don't know if maybe the bolts just got misplaced along the way or if they even come with Greg's kit. I'm not sure, but these four bolts in here, these are M8 by 20, 1.25 pitch, and uh, we kind of had a hard time on these two rear bolts right here because. Uh, you can see there's barely any clearance on them, but I had to get these uh, hex bolts and then grind off, kind of taper down to to make sure that there's clearance enough on these two rear ones. So I don't know if, uh, like I said, I don't know if Greg sends the right bolts or even if bolts come with it or not. But uh, if you want to just go purchase your own, these are 12.9 bolts, uh, M8 by 20, uh, 1.25 pitch. And the reason that uh, you need to add this power steering pump is because the stock vehicle that this motor came in uh, had an electric power steering system which is actually a good thing for us because the alternator is a 170 amp alternator so it's pretty powerful because of their power steering system setup that they had but 
it's pretty simple to just go ahead and add this and Greg did a really good job of creating this laser cut bracket. Okay, we have gotten the serpentine belt off and we're getting ready to put the new one on and there are two tensioner uh, related adjustments that can be made here. First thing you do is loosen this. This is the fulcrum bolt for the alternator and this bolt over here take it out and it is the it's what keeps the alternator fixed. The alternator, there's no adjustment like on a traditional uh, American V8 engine. Once the alternator's in, it's fixed, but you can see how it moves here. And then the second thing is uh, on this tensioner bracket. I looked and looked and tried to find how Subaru did theirs, and they were all different than this particular setup. But this bolt down here stays fixed. There's no need to take that off. You can loosen this bolt, and the way that this thing is made to adjust is that you see that bottom this bottom thing is, has a spring in it or spring loaded mechanism so this can go back and forth and then when it's got the right tension then we tighten this back up. Regarding the serpentine belt in many engines particularly gasoline engines the camshaft is driven by the belt but in this case this whole thing is uh, the, the the front face cover I don't know, I'm assuming there's a timing chain inside here, so when you take the serpentine belt off, it appears, because this is the alternator, this is the compressor, and this is the water pump, so we've got tape on here just to make sure that this main crankshaft doesn't move, but uh, uh, as long as, as you know this doesn't move, uh, then just running the serpentine and connecting it to the crankshaft then we should be okay. So that's kind of a relief to not worry about the timing being off the tooth or, or something. So the serpentine belt comes straight across the top from the alternator to the compressor. Then it comes down, comes around the water pump, then it comes up to the right, comes around the power steering pump, then it comes down around the crank, and then up around this uh, tensioner pulley back up to the alternator. Well we got the motor and the tranny under the rear bumper. Uh, it was kind of a hassle. We had to get our engine hoist and uh, lift it up from here. We tried to use a high lift jack on the side but it was a little too dangerous for what we wanted so we just decided to hoist it up and uh, slide the motor on. Uh, Let's see, so this is a master cylinder, I mean a slave clutch cylinder from Dave Clymer of 5 Speed Bus. Uh, it works a little bit better if you plan on using a Subaru transmission um, because the master cylinder and the Volkswagen up there just pairs better with um, his, his uh, custom slave clutch cylinder here so uh, right now we kinda we got the tank tightened up the gas tank which was still a little bit loose we tied up a few little odds and ends uh, right now we're about to mount the Rocky Mountain Westy engine carrier brackets to the frame and then we're gonna get the motor up so stay tuned <laughs> 